Hello and welcome to your quick news, current event, and stimulus update. Today we have some big news. The White House is looking to add $600 direct stimulus checks to the people in the latest bipartisan proposal. McConnell has backed down on some of his stimulus demands surprisingly enough. Rich countries are hoarding up all of the COVID vaccines. We're going to go much more in depth on that. The UK is looking into some allergic reactions to Pfizer's latest vaccine. And as always, I'm going to send you on your way at the end of this video with some current events, just things that I found interesting in the news and wanted to share. So without further ado, let's dive right into the news. After much backlash from representatives and critics everywhere, the White House is looking to add some direct stimulus to the latest bipartisan proposal, thankfully. The White House is contemplating adding a $600 direct stimulus check into the latest proposal. However, to make this happen, they want to slash unemployment insurance from $180 billion in total budget size to $43 billion, something that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer have both said is unacceptable. I think the answer here that gives both sides a little bit of what they want and helps the people the most is a $1,200 stimulus check, $400 per week unemployment boost, $100 billion to schools, $20 billion to testing and virus tracing and vaccine development, $150 billion to small businesses through another round of paycheck protection funding. Small businesses obviously need a ton of help right now. And then something around 400 to 500 billion dollars to state and local governments to help fund their programs if they want to do extra stimulus uh, programs, if they want to change unemployment a little bit, give them some freedom on a smaller level to do as they need on a state by state or local government level. So this, along with the small issues that I didn't mention, um, would bring the package size up to around 1.5 to 1.8 trillion dollars. Many Republicans have already agreed to figures this large in the past and every Democratic issue would be covered, just maybe not quite to the, the highest amounts that some of them want. Boom. Solved. I solved stimulus. What do you need me to solve next? World hunger? You know, tune in tomorrow. I'll have my solution for world hunger. <laughs> but in reality, the latest proposal from Steve Mnuchin came on Tuesday at $916 billion. In this bill, Mitch McConnell has said that the GOP would back off of liability protections if the Democrats would drop state and local government funding. Again, an area that Nancy and Chuck will not budge on. So we're getting actually a lot of compromise from everyone involved aside from Nancy and Chuck right now. The all or nothing kind of negotiation tactic has not worked out well for them in the past and is working out extremely poorly for the American people who are most in need, yet they're still sticking to it for whatever reason. McConnell stated, quote, what I recommend is we set aside liability, set aside state and local, and pass those things that we can agree on knowing full well we'll be back at this after the first of the new year. This is actually, if they would just think this through a little bit, this is actually a huge opportunity for Pelosi and Schumer if they decide to take it. This is because Pelosi's number one concern of passing a small bill is that they're going to pass a small bill and then there's never going to be another bill. But if there's this, this red line item, as McConnell calls it, of, um, of business liability protections that is not in this small bill, Pelosi knows that another bill is desirable for the Republican side as well. So they, they both have these points that they want to get passed after a small bill gets passed. So then she can focus on getting the other things passed. Well, the Republicans focus on what they want to get passed. So get what, get what you can agree on right now passed and then work on the, uh, the more contentious, uh, heated things later. It seems so simple. So as the two sides continue to bounce demands back and forth, COVID vaccines are taking the world by storm right now. And it seems just like the toilet paper uh, shortages and issues here in the States months ago, the vaccines are being bought up and hoarded by the richest countries and leaving the other countries kind of on the wayside. Nations making up only 14% of the world's population currently own more than half of all the leading vaccines. The People's Vaccine Alliance announced yesterday that in 67 poor nations, one out of 10 people could only hope for a vaccine by the end of the year. In Canada alone, enough doses have been purchased for citizens to be vaccinated five times over. 
Staying on topic of vaccines while we're at it, after the UK's rollout yesterday, there has been some cases of allergic reactions. British regulators have begun investigating the link to the Pfizer vaccine and these allergic reactions. Two staff members with the National Health Service who both had a history of allergies had unspecified reactions after receiving the vaccine. And authorities have stated that both are recovering well, but while they're recovering, the, regular has, the regulator has issued a warning for anyone who has significant allergic reactions to medicines or foods to avoid the vaccine for now. Now, this is not necessarily a new thing. Professionals recommend that if you have severe allergies to avoid any new vaccines and medicines until they have run through the masses, because obviously those people are most predisposed to adverse reactions. Pfizer only tested 42,000 people, which is a lot of people. Don't get me wrong better than uh, Russia's 12 people they tested in some of their trials. But there still is no way to see how the vaccine will affect that one in one million case until after it's been out for a while and you know a million people have received the dose. Documents published by Pfizer and BioNTech have both showed that people who had a history of severe allergic reactions were excluded from testing in the first place. So we don't have a legitimate sample size here for those who deal with those issues, you know, normally who deal with issues with vaccines or normal medications and allergic reactions. So as we, as we prepare for the FDA's decision on emergency use here in the US, make sure you are fully aware of yours and your loved one's medical history before you decide whether to vaccinate or not. And that's gonna do it for the heavy stuff. You know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Also, let me know your thoughts on the $600 stimulus check in the comments. Would you, you know, are you happy about the $600 stimulus check or you're like, 1200 was already a slap in the face. You know, we heard $2,000 a month at one point. We heard all these other things. Or you're just like, you know, let's just, just give me something, you know, after all these months of just back and forth. What are your thoughts on it? All right, now let's do some current events. <clears throat> on this day, 55 years ago, a Charlie Brown Christmas aired on American television for the first time. I never knew this, but the production was way under budget and the producers thought that it was gonna be a total flop as they, they didn't have the time or the money to add a laugh track and the musical score was so different th than anything else coming out those days. They thought it wasn't gonna work, but obviously we're talking about it 55 years later, so something worked out there. Uh, moving on, Caleb Benham from California found himself literally having to wrestle his dog from a 350 pound black bear the night before Thanksgiving. I know this isn't super current, but I just came across this and this is a ridiculous story. The amount of adrenaline that must have been going through this guy to attack a bear. When he was asked about it, he, he said, I ran down there, plowed into the bear, tackled it and grabbed it by the throat and started hitting it in the face and the eye and, <laughs> until it let go. That guy, he's a badass. Moving on, there's a new app called Nightwear for veterans that suffer from debilitating and life-destroying night terrors. The app is programmed into a smartwatch and detects when someone is entering a night terror based on heart rate and breathing patterns. And then once it detects that, it administers small vibrations, vibrations that will bring the user out of REM sleep, essentially cutting that night terror off, but still allowing the person to sleep. It's, that's awesome. Tyler has already got FDA approval and the app will be available for prescription through the VA very soon. Super excited. So that's all we have for today. I hope you have a great Thursday and of course, have a profitable day.